Anki is such a wonderful app in terms of helping you learn new content and retaining it for the long run. I've personally been using it for two years and I can confidently say that it's played a large role in helping me with all my A-level content and being able to stay on top of a lot of my work. That being said, if I could go back in time to when I first started using it, there are definitely a few things that I'd do differently. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Jack Rian. I'm a year 13 student studying biology, chemistry, maths and psychology at A level. And in this video, I'm just going to go through a few things that I would personally do differently if I was to start using Anki again as someone who's never used it before. As usual, timestamps will be in the description below so you can jump around and find exactly what you're looking for without wasting any time. Firstly, I want you to play around with some of the settings on Anki. Now, this is probably one of the most important things I wish I knew when I started using Anki and that's to be able to change and tweak some of the default settings. Arguably, all the things I talk about in this video are things that I do think are important, but this is definitely the one where I noticed the most immediate or noticeable improvement with how I was learning content after I'd implemented it. If you open the settings menu on Anki, you'll notice that there are so many things you can change on the app a lot of it is around the intervals in which cards are shown to you or how frequently they're shown to you now even till this day I don't a hundred percent understand every setting on Anki it's such a broad app and I feel like it would take a lot of time before anyone would be able to proficiently understand everything however there are a lot of videos on YouTube going through some recommended settings that you should change because the reality is that, in my opinion, Anki's default settings aren't that great. And I think it's the reason why a lot of people who end up using Anki don't understand why there's so much hype around it or why so many students recommend it. But I do think that if you change the settings and play around with it a bit, you'll definitely notice an improvement. Now, I will link below the video that I use to decide how to change my settings. It's a video by a channel called Anking, which is a really good channel if you're someone who's trying to get into Anki and they've basically got a video that goes through some recommended settings and all I did was I went on that video and I did exactly what they did and I did notice an almost immediate improvement in how I felt regarding the content and how confident I was feeling. I definitely would say that after changing the settings Anki became a lot harder to use in the sense that I felt learning the content was a bit more challenging but in the long run I definitely feel that that extra sense of challenge was what helped me retain a lot of the information better. The second tip I want to give you is to make use of the number of add-ons there are online. Now when I first started using Anki I had no clue that add-ons were even a thing and now my Anki is literally filled with a number of different add-ons that will help me either stay more focused on Anki or help me make cards more efficiently. This is truly something that I feel will help everyone. It could either help you be more productive on Anki by helping you make cards a lot quicker, or it can even just make your Anki setup look a lot nicer, which is something I felt encouraged me to use it more. One thing I don't really like about Anki is the user interface. It's really, really boring, and sometimes that can put you off using it. But there are definitely some add-ons that can help make your Anki a lot more colorful and encourage you to use it a lot more. Now, you can go onto the Anki website or library and there's so many add-ons but just a few that I really recommend you guys install is firstly the review heat map add-on this add-on essentially lets you track how many cards you're doing every day gives you some details on your average cards daily and can give you an overview of how many cards you have coming up it's also got a really cool streak feature which can really gamify Anki and help you feel like you're playing a game by seeing how long you can go on your streak without missing a day. The second add-on is the image occlusion add-on which is quite a popular add-on and what this add-on lets you do is it lets you take an image and just cover parts of the image and then Anki will turn those into separate flashcards. This is really useful if you're doing subjects like biology for example where you have a lot of diagrams that need annotating and instead of making separate cards for each annotation you can just 
drag and drop the image that's annotated and just cover all the annotations and then Anki will make about five to ten cards for you based on how much you've covered up and I found that this was such a quick way for me to really make a bunch of cards on diagram based content that's really hard to kind of summarize into work again these are just a few and you will find that when you browse the Anki library there are so many to choose from that can potentially help you out and importing the add-ons into your Anki Anki is super easy. You'll find that every add-on in the Anki library will come with a 10 digit code and all you have to do is first you have to copy and paste that code and then simply open up Anki, click on tools and then add-ons and just copy and paste that unique code into the search bar and then Anki will automatically import that add-on and then all you have to do is restart your Anki and the next time you open it up it will be there. I'll also leave a link in the description below to the two add-ons I've mentioned and hopefully after a bit of searching you guys can find all the add-ons you want and this will help you hopefully become more efficient at Anki and encourage you to use it a lot more. The third tip is to make your cards short and concise. Now this is something that I also talk about in my video on how I use Excel and Anki to revise for my A-levels. Something I recommend you check out if it sounds interesting to you. Now when I first started using Anki, probably the biggest mistake I made was my cards were too information dense. And I'm not even talking about just a little too long. I'm talking some of my cards consisted of multiple paragraphs of just information after information and just facts and facts and facts. Even the cards that I consider relatively short were quite wordy and had lots of information in it and looking back at that I realized that that was probably the worst thing I could have done when it came to using Anki. I remember each card would take me a couple of minutes just to go through because it took me that long to recall all the information in it and so the process was slow and also quite ineffective and the reason I think making your cards too long is very ineffective is because of the rating system in Anki where after each card you have to rate whether or not you found the card easy or difficult. Now this is a relatively straightforward thing to do. You do the card, if we're able to answer the question then you say it was easy, if not you say it was difficult. However when you have a lot of information, for example four to five different points on one card, it can be difficult to draw the line on how easy you found it. For example if you had five bits of information on one card and you were able to confidently answer four out of five of those points, it's difficult to decide where to rate the card because if you rate the card as easy then that one point that you are unable to really answer will not be shown to you as frequently as it needs to be. However if you rate the card as too difficult then the four out of the five points that you were able to answer confidently will just keep on coming up way more consistently than you need it to and what will happen is that information that you already know won't be able to kind of leave your brain so when it comes to recalling it you're not struggling to recall which is when most of the learning actually happens. Instead you will end up storing that information in your short term memory and then when it comes to the exams you might not be able to remember it as effectively. I remember when I realized my Anki cards were too long it took me so long to go through each card and then break it down into smaller cards. Some of my cards ended up being broken down into five to ten separate flash cards and I look back at that and I think if I had just made my cards short and concise from the beginning I would have definitely saved myself a lot of time and stress. So I would highly recommend you guys don't make the same mistake that I made. Yes when you make your cards short and concise you have a lot more cards but after a few weeks or even months of using Anki you'll realize that the cards that you find easy won't be coming up as frequently and so then your workload is a lot more manageable. Tip four is probably the tip that you'll hear most people who use Anki tell you and that's to do your cards daily, especially your review cards. Over the two years of me using Anki this is definitely the thing I've heard the most and it's probably the thing I've told the most people to be wary of when they're using Anki. Doing all your review cards can have such huge benefits but I feel like the reason a lot of people end up 
not doing their cards daily is the benefits of doing your reviews is something you kind of notice a few weeks or even months into using Anki because remember learning is a long-term process and you won't always notice results immediately and I think this puts a lot of people off being consistent with Anki because they feel like it's not being as effective as people say it is. I can guarantee you that if you do your Anki cards daily then sooner or later you're going to feel so proficient with all your content and you're going to be able to recall everything just like that. You're going to see the question in the exam and suddenly all your Anki cards are going to come flooding back to you because you did them every day. There were even days when I'd feel really really exhausted and even then I pushed myself to do my Anki and I do feel like on, even on those days where I felt tired and I still did my Anki, those were the days that really helped push me to do my Anki reviews every day and that ultimately played a big role in helping me learn all my content. I remember when I first used Anki, I would always go on these sporadic or random breaks where I just go a whole week without doing any cards. And the issue with doing that is when you come back to Anki, you'll see all your reviews build up and there are times where that number might go up to a hundred for example. And when you see so many reviews pending that you need to get through, it kind of puts you off doing Anki and then that kind of has a huge domino effect where you just stop doing your cards altogether. So as difficult as it may be, doing your reviews every day will help you stay as consistent as possible and will encourage you to do Anki daily because then when you do do it every day, the amount of cards you get daily goes lower and lower so it's a lot more manageable. Even just missing one day can cause a slippery slope so please, please, please do your reviews every single day. Now, the fifth tip isn't anything too crucial, but I do feel like it's something worth mentioning, and that's to make use of the Anki mobile app. Now, it should be noted that I'm an Android user, so for me, the app is free. I know for iOS, the app can cost 25 pounds, in which case, a lot of people don't really want to spend that much money which is fair enough but I do feel like the app is a really good way to help you get through your content when you either don't have your laptop or maybe tablet nearby and you still want to get through your reviews. Again this isn't a big deal but I found that for me this was especially useful when I was out of the house maybe with my family going grocery shopping and I'd just be sitting in the car with all this time to myself and in order to pass the time I would literally just open up Anki and get through maybe 30 to 50 card and so when I got home I'd have a lot less work to do. I think this will also be really useful if you're someone who has quite a long commute to school and you're traveling maybe 30 minutes to an hour to school and back in which case it might be the perfect time to be doing your Anki and it can be difficult if you're only doing it on a laptop whereas if you have it on your mobile device or your phone then it can become a lot more convenient to get it done. Again this isn't super crucial and I do feel that in my second year of A-levels I was using it a lot less because there was the whole quarantine and London was in lockdown so I spent most of my time at home and so any time I spent out of the house I kind of just purposefully stayed away from Anki or education and just to get my mind off it. But now with all this like lockdown easing up, it might be worth having the app so when you're out and about and you have the time, you could potentially go through your Anki cards. And with that, we have reached the end of the video. So if you found the video useful, you enjoyed it, then leave a like, subscribe, and let me know what you thought about the video. Or even if you have any questions about anything I've gone through in this video, I'm more than happy to answer any questions in the comments below so feel free to ask any sort of question. I know when I started Anki I'd love to have had someone to help maybe answer any questions I have so don't be afraid to ask away. That's been all from me and goodbye.